Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis, and you're in for a long video today, so grab a snack, because what we are going to be discussing is uh, ranking the various martial arts on how well they prepare you for a self-defense situation. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Be sure to hit the bell. You guys know how to YouTube, so go ahead and do the whole YouTube thing. I want to make one thing clear, that I am coming at this from the perspective of a self-defense expert. So if you're somebody who has a big passion for your art, and I say something about it you don't like, understand, I'm not saying that your art sucks, I'm just saying it's not necessarily the best for specifically self-defense. When I look at a self-defense art, when I look at a martial art for self-defense, I don't simply look at whether or not it makes you a good fighter, even though that is a part of self-defense. When we look at self-defense, we also have to look at being a well-rounded fighter. Do you know stand, clinch, ground, and weapons? But that's not even all of it. You have to understand the psychology of things. Do you understand situational awareness, conflict de-escalation? violence avoidance, the psychology of attackers, local law so that you know what you can and can't do to somebody, the morality of self-defense. All of that is wrapped up when we look at self-defense. Now, I've tried, I've done this video, uh, attempted to make this video before uh, through an A through F scale, and I just found that there's, it just got too cluttered really, really quick. So instead, we're going to have like a B plus and a C plus and a D plus. For right now, A is going to stay A. A means it's good. There is no S tier because Ultimately, there is no like flawless martial art, so I'm never going to say that any art's perfect. So, um, yeah, let's just start diving into it and start laying things down. The uh, order may change as we go through things. So let's start off. We'll just work, I guess, alphabetically. So yeah, let's start off with Aikido. So Aikido is a Japanese martial art that stems from Jiu-Jitsu. Um, and... If we're really looking at Aikido, honestly, as a martial art for self-defense, it's going to have a solid F. And I know that doesn't surprise anybody who's on YouTube because Aikido gets a lot of hate. Aikido is not necessarily a martial art that sucks. It just has a very different focus than what most people think about when they think of martial arts. If we're looking at Aikido as an art, what it does really well is it teaches self-discipline. It teaches um, self-respect and self-actualization. It teaches you how to love other people. So, so philosophically, Aikido is a really, really cool martial art. However, it lacks in a lot of important details, but the most important detail Aikido fails in is that it lacks any kind of pressure testing. Um, where I do like Aikido, where if I bring it up, up, I could bring it way up here, is that Aikido does teach a lot about the morality of martial arts, that there's kind of this like kill or be killed mentality in a lot of self-defense arts, and that's really wrong because 90% of martial arts situations, uh, or sorry, 90% of self-defense situations are you being attacked by someone you know well in a place that you are very comfortable. So if you think about, like, if your son were to attack you, would you necessarily want to gouge out his, eye, gouge out his eyes and smash his head into the wall? No, you'd want to use a more peaceful tactic. And Aikido does talk about that. Unfortunately, the way Aikido practices, most Aikido practitioners never truly get pressure tested. They do have an exercise that they call randori, but it's not the same as the randori that you would see in judo. In judo, they're really genuinely trying to take you down, whereas Aikido, the person who is attacking you, is being awfully cooperative. And ultimately, Aikido just doesn't have enough pressure testing to really uh, really cut it as a self-defense art at all. I would not consider Aikido self-defense. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Bartitsu. So Bartitsu is a uh, historical European martial art. It's also a ancestor. It also comes from Japanese jiu-jitsu, and it mixes in with a little bit of boxing and some fencing. Um, Bartitsu was originally designed as a self-defense art. Um, it was. It's overall. It's a fairly well-rounded martial art. Um, it has stand, it has clinch, it has ground, it even has weapons, so it has all of that. Um, but Bartitsu has a serious problem that brings it much further down the line. Um, and that's the fact that Bartitsu is a lost art that was reclaimed. So by that I mean there was a time period in our world history in which literally no one knew Bartitsu. Bartitsu is actually a fairly obscure martial art that some martial historians 
um, basically found manuscripts for and attempted to recreate. Um, and if you've ever tried to learn a martial art from a book, you know how difficult it is to actually do things correctly. I know I, for one, did a long stint in which books were my only access to martial arts. And when I finally got into the gym, um, I found out that I was kind of sort of doing everything correctly, but I wasn't doing anything perfectly. And so because of that, I think Bartitsu has a little bit of a blind leading the blind situation where, yes, like... It does have effective aspects to it, but honestly, nobody who practices it um, actually knows if they're doing anything like correctly. It's mostly guesswork based off of history um, and logic, and that may piss off a lot of Bartitsu people, but that's basically what it is. Um, and also, I find a lot of Bartitsu people don't pressure test enough, um, so that's where that goes. Okay, U.S. Army Basics. Oh, you know, I would give them an F, to be honest, um, but don't worry, it's going to move up before you get mad at me. I'll tell you why I'll give it an F. Um, you are not a soldier, um, if, if at least not for self-defense situations. A lot of people think if it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for me. But the problem with it being is that if you're a 50-year-old guy who hasn't worked out in 20 years, um, a, a fighting system that was designed for... 18 year olds is not going to be the right fighting system for you. Not to mention that any good uh, soldier is never going to have to use their hand to hand combat skills. Oh my God, they don't need them. They have a giant goodie belt filled with weapons. But that is where um, Army Basics is going to get a bump up. It definitely gets a bump up for me based off of the fact that it does teach you how to use guns um, and it does have some basic fighting abilities, but where I think Army Basics excels, where it will probably get a D plus, is that Army Basics is going to give you grit that I know for a fact that any martial artist that I've trained with before and after the military, they didn't necessarily come back like skill wise a better fighter but they definitely don't have quit in them and that's a really good thing a big big part of being good at fighting is being able to take a hit and keep moving forward and you'll definitely get that from army basics so i think the combination of the fact that they teach um they teach you how to use a firearm and they teach you basic um striking uh keeps it from being an f and it's it's raw grit that brings it up to that d plus level Okay, um, so the next one is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, I will have you note that Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is also on this list. So we are separating the sport from the, like, I guess, tradition, okay? So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, when I'm using that term, I'm specifically talking about the sport of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I think the sport of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, is pretty damn good. Um the, re the w reason why I have it up in B tier and not in a lower tier is because of pressure testing. It is really important if you're going to be preparing yourself for a self-defense situation that you are used to pressure testing. One thing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has that many martial arts don't have is full force pressure testing. If you think about an art like, say, karate, there's no way to actually practice karate punching each other as hard as you possibly can and still have a safe training environment. If you punch each other as hard as you can, people would be getting concussions, brain trauma, broken noses, busted teeth. Whereas in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you are able to go as hard as you possibly can against each other with little to no injury. And that is a big part of becoming a good fighter and getting used to the energy of a fight. The reason why it's not in a B plus or an A tier for self-defense is uh, for a couple reasons. First, especially if you're sports-based BJJ, there is not nearly enough emphasis on stand fighting. You can argue that 80% or 90% of, of fights end up on the ground, but almost 100% of them start standing up. And if you're talking about street fighting, in particular, uh, which isn't a huge part of the self-defense world, despite what people think. Um, but if you are talking about being attacked at a bar or attacked at an ATM or attacked in a parking lot, uh, there's about a 90% chance that that altercation is going to have a weapon. And being on the ground with someone with a weapon is a very dangerous thing. At the end of the day, you do become a good fighter by studying Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but you 
do not have a well-rounded arsenal that can prepare yourself for the absolute chaos that is in a self-defense situation. Um, and because it, I, we are specifically talking about the sport, um, you aren't going to learn about things like situational awareness, conflict de-escalation, and local law. You're just looking at how to win the sport. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a sport also gives a lot of credit to things that are dangerous in a self-defense situation. Things like fighting entirely off your back, open guards, um, pulling guard um, as a primary strategy. All of those things are no good. Um, in the sport of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, slamming is illegal, and uh, that needs to be taken into account because, for example, in like CDS, if we put if we do an armbar from guard, we always flip the person over on their back so that we can't be slammed. Whereas in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the sport you're not allowed to slam the person, so there's no worry about it. Um, and you can say what you want that you're prepared for the self-defense situation, but you do what you practice. So when you're freaking out, you're going to do exactly what you've been practicing. So it's pretty damn good because. Um, of the high level of pressure testing and the effectiveness of ground fighting, it does have an issue with the fact that it doesn't really cover any of the actual self-defense basics. And then also, I mean, this is needless to say, but it's not very good against multiple opponents. But most martial arts aren't. Very few martial arts have any chance against multiple opponents. Okay, next up is boxing. Um, I could almost say the exact same thing that I just said about BJJ about boxing. Everything applies that you will become one hell of a fighter if you study boxing. Um, you will be very, very effective, uh, but you will have none of the important details that you need for self defense. Just as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is not very well rounded, neither is boxing. Um, you can be the best boxer in the world, but if this guy puts you on the ground, the BJJ guy puts you on the ground, guess what? You're a white belt now. You don't know anything. And uh, if you think about it, in every high school, not every high school, but most high schools have a wrestling team, um, and there are several high schools in every city, so the chances of coming across someone who knows how to do a basic double leg and put you on the ground is fairly high. So boxing, you will become a good fighter. You are not going to be an expert at self-defense. Catch wrestling, um, once again, very, very similar. Uh, I'm going to put it right there with all of them. Everything is echoed. So the reason why I don't think... Um, catch wrestling is as good as boxing or BJJ, why I'm putting it uh, more in this tier. I might even put it in the C tier. I don't know. Ooh, I'm going to put it down here. I might put it there. I'll put it in C+. And the reason why I'm putting it there um, is because BJJ and boxing is technique over strength. So it is perfectly possible for somebody who's fairly weak to uh, become very, very good at BJJ. I personally have never met a catch wrestler who was anything other than jacked beyond belief. And it's because the philosophy of Catch wrestling is technique plus strength. So there's a lot of moves in catch wrestling that, you know, a 120 pound person could never do to a 225 pound person. Um, it has all of the weaknesses towards self-defense as BJJ, um, but a lot of the kind of philosophy of catch wrestling um, allows for people to kind of force their way through techniques as opposed to technically moving themselves through it. And at the end of the day, if you, if you, any technique, you know, relies on you being strong, the only, the easiest way to defeat that technique is just be stronger than you. And let's be honest, someone who's bigger, stronger, and more powerful than you is who's going to attack you. You aren't being attacked by someone who's smaller than you. You're being attacked by a bigger guy. So catch wrestling, very good art. You'll become a badass fighter. Does not make you an expert in self-defense. Um, for all the same reasons why we said with these arts here. All right, CDS. Well, this is going to be biased as fuck because CDS is my art. <laughs> so uh, CDS is what we teach here at the School of Self-Defense. Um, CDS is mixed martial arts for self-defense. So if we look at the idea of learning how to do stand, clinch, and ground, learning weapons, and then also learning situational awareness, conflict de-escalation, um, local law, how to identify potential abusers, all of that is covered in combative defense system. That's CDS. Um, CDS is not an art without weaknesses. It is an art that is 100% focused on self-defense. So you will not necessarily take CDS and uh, become a champion boxer. You will not necessarily take CDS and become a champion catch wrestler. But what CDS does do is it focuses 100% on self-defense. Um, and if it wouldn't work for a 120 pound person and it wouldn't work for a 50 year old man who hasn't worked out in like 10 years it's not in the cds curriculum and like i said about cds it also focuses on other aspects of self-defense like situational awareness conflict de-escalation as well as the use of weapons and improvised weapons so 
Obviously, that's pretty biased. Don't get mad at me. It's my channel. I can do what I want. Okay, so next up is going to be Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. This is one of my favorite martial arts. Um, so I'm going to put Gracie Jiu-Jitsu up here in this B-plus tier. I think Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is a pretty freaking good martial art. I might even put it up in the A tier. I don't know. Um, I think Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is a pretty damn good martial art. Um, so Gracie Jiu-Jitsu has everything that the sport of BJJ has. So it's right here with it, right? But the difference is Gracie Jiu-Jitsu also practices some basic striking as well as they pressure test against striking. So even though they aren't the best punchers, they have people punch them. They have people kick them. They have people attack them. Uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu doesn't strict it so it has it has literally everything sports jujitsu has there's nothing that it's missing but it also has the additional aspect of it focuses on like well what do you do if the guy has a knife what do you do if the guy has a gun um you know crazy jiu-jitsu also takes the time to talk about might be moving up here with this guy um it also has it also takes the time to discuss um situational awareness and conflict de-escalation however Grace Jiu Jitsu does have a weakness, and that it is a one game plan art. Um, 100% Grace Jiu Jitsu is bridge the gap, establish the takedown, establish a dominant position, and finish the fight. That is the strategy 100% of the time. That's what Gracie Jiu Jitsu does. Um, which means that if it's dealing with a multi-man scenario, um, it literally doesn't have a game plan. I don't think any martial art, not even CDS, is good at dealing with multiple opponents. But Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, by the, uh, if you, there's actually a video by Henner Gracie where he says the game plan is to run. Well, no shit. The game plan for all self-defense situations should be to run. If you can run away from even a fist fight, run away from a fist fight. What we talk about for self-defense is something that you can't avoid. So if your game plan is to run away and you can't run away, you're completely screwed. So Gracie Jiu-Jitsu is kind of flawed in the fact that it just has that kind of one game plan thing. And of course, being on the ground against multiple opponents and even to an extent being on the ground when someone pulls a knife as opposed to as defense against a knife is also a problem. So Grace Jiu Jitsu is going to be plus. It's pretty damn good. Um, it's just a little narrow sighted. Talk about narrow sighted guns and firearms. So, you know, at 20 feet, it wins, right? A hundred percent. There's no better self-defense on earth at 20 feet or further than a gun. Um, the problem with the kind of gun based self-defense study <sighs> is that the vast majority, I mean the vast majority of self-defense situations happen from way too close for your gun to be viable. Let me explain myself. Any police officer will tell you that a gun in its holster at under 20 feet is basically useless. If I'm standing five feet away from you and I have a knife, I can bridge the gap and stab you five times before you could even pull your weapon out. Now, of course, with an exhaustive amount of training, you could develop the reflexes to, as you get attacked, to identify the target, assess the situation, pull your gun, aim your gun, and fire into their chest in time. However, I would argue that amount, that kind of reaction time is potentially dangerous because if you make a single mistake in assessing the situation, you could kill somebody who doesn't deserve, deserve to be killed, which is where guns become the biggest issue, or that's where the biggest issue between guns is that not all self-defense situations require lethal force. I have to stress that. Ken Poe, we'll be talking here in a second. <laughs> um... There's this idea of kill or be killed, but if you're a father, the number one most likely person to throw a punch at you is your kid when they're like a teenager. If you have a son, he is the most likely person to attack you above all other people. Um, uh, the issue with, um, with this, if you imagine like if you went to confront your son about some drugs you found in his um, room and they threw a punch at you. If your only answer is shooting someone, guess what? You're either going to kill your son or not have an answer. Which also comes to the fact that the vast majority of self-defense situations happen somewhere um, where you are comfortable and with someone you know well. Do you think a girl in her dorm room making out with her boyfriend who decides to go too far has her gun on her? No. If you are at home 
and you're in an argument with your son, do you have your gun on you? No. It also suffers from it's just narrow-sighted. Unlike U.S. Basics, which cut, which includes firearm training, but um, uh, the uh, U.S. Army Basics also covers hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, so, like, if you don't have your gun, you have some sort of backup. If all you have is your gun and you don't have your gun on you, which there's a strong chance that literally right now while you're watching this video, you don't have your gun on you, um, uh, it's not that great. I will tell you where guns are good. Guns are good spatial defense weapons. They're good for defending your property, defending um, your bank. It's good at defending like like space, right? Um, guns are not that good for defending yourself because most self-defense situations happen from too close for you to draw your gun in time and most self-defense situ and many, many, many self-defense situations don't require um, lethal force. And then finally, uh, uh, you don't always have your gun on you. So I always have my fist and my hands on me. Okay, so next up, we're going to have Hepkido. Now, Hepkido is an art that probably could go up here with Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in how well-rounded it is and how like effective it is. The thing that's really good about Hepkido is that they cover stand, clinch, ground, and weapons. They cover all of it. Um, Hepkido is a traditional Korean martial art that primarily focuses on joint locking, but they do have punches, kicks, um, ground fighting, and weapons. Um, they do teach the morality of self-defense, which is also really important. So they understand that not all fights require lethal force. That's the reason why they teach joint locks. The problem with head keto, which makes it move down here or maybe even here, um, is that it's one of the most inconsistent martial arts as far as how good the school is. Um, so there's a term in the martial arts world that I'll probably be using a lot more in this video called a mick dojo and uh the issue with a mick dojo is that um <laughs> the issue with a mick dojo is that it's a martial arts school that is far more concerned with profit than they are with making you good at fighting oftentimes they are kind of martial arts themed daycares that put you in these horrible contracts and they actually don't get you any good at all Unlike BJJ, I've literally never met a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt who wasn't a damn good fighter. I've met plenty of Hepkido black belts who don't know how to fight. Um, so Hepkido, conceptually, excellent martial art, but the inconsistency in the quality of the schools puts it at a C. So you can find good Hepkido schools, but they are much more rare than they probably should be. Next up, Jeet Kune Do, That's Bruce Lee's art. Blam! Gets put right there. We're done. No, um, now I'll go into detail. So, uh, CDS is actually based off of Jeet Kune Do. Um, Jeet Kune Do is a philosophical take on martial arts developed by Bruce Lee. Um, Bruce Lee kind of rejected style, and he felt that it was the individual that was more important. Um, unlike BJJ, boxing, catch, or Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, um, the whole point of JKD is to be as well-rounded as possible, to literally study as much as possible and then limit, eliminate all the non-essentials till you get down just to, like, to the basic core movements that work best for you. Um, it's honestly right there with CDS. Um, the only difference between these two is uh, JKD does not have a written curriculum, whereas CDS has a written curriculum. So I would say if you're looking for self-defense, CDS is superior just because it has like a logical progression from I know nothing to I know a lot, and it has like a game plan for how it's going to teach you that. Whereas most Jeet Kune schools are going to be more along uh, the lines of you go in and you're just learning whatever the teacher is teaching that day. Um, there are some people who teach Jeet Kune Do precisely the way that Bruce Lee did um, back in the uh, 60s. But I will tell you that if you read literally anything Bruce Lee writes, he would say that that is uh, not the way he wanted JKD to uh, to be done. That he very much wanted Jeet Kune Do to be more of a concept than necessarily a style. So so stop stylizing JKD. Bruce Lee told said you he didn't want you to do that. <laughs> but uh, but most Jeet Kune Do schools are going to teach um, a lot of this kind of stuff. So next up we have Judo. So. Judo is an art that I could either put here or I could put here. Um, and I'll tell you why. So, oh, that's jujitsu. I meant to grab judo. Let's, let's put you back. I want judo. Okay. So judo is an art that I could put here or I could put here. I could put it in either place. Um, the area where judo would be in the B tier is the fact that a lot of judo schools only focus on the sport. 
um, that they want to like prepare people for the Olympics. And for sure, judo preparing for the Olympics, I think is a little bit better than BJJ on the ground um, for um, self-defense because BJJ is like 90% ground um, and judo has a strong element, like 70 to 80% of it start is uh, based off of stand fighting. And since all fights start standing up, judo is pretty damn good for that. It also has a very well-rounded ground curriculum as well. The area where judo is going to get moved up here is that if you find a judo school that teaches the complete art, you actually get most of what's in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu as well. Um, that if you pick up uh, Jigeru Kano's, that's a creative judo, if you pick up his book on uh, judo, Kodokan Judo, um, it has throws, it has takedowns, it has pins, it has submissions and chokes, but you'll also notice in there it has defenses against attacks with knives, defenses against guns, defenses against punches and kicks. So, um, just like Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, uh, a complete judo school, a school that teaches the whole art, is going to teach you how to defend yourself. The area where judo uh, falters is the fact that judo does not teach very good striking or any kind of like offensive tools. Um, there is punches and kicks in judo, uh, but they are trash. And I'm just going to be blunt. Like, they're not very good. Um, so, whereas, yeah, they do have punch and kicks. They aren't that good at them. And also, most judo schools aren't going to focus nearly enough on the uh, legality of self-defense. They aren't going to be talking about situational awareness or conflict de-escalation. There is a lot of talk about the morality of self-defense. So, I think judo and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu jiu are probably about equal in that in that realm um both of all of these top arts you're going to see here all these like upper arts are going to be the arts that you can also see that are going to pressure test a lot and that's really important that means that you're fighting against people who are not letting you do what you're trying to do let's see your next art okay so this is a symbol for Prakita tertia kali which but we'll talk about kali as a whole um, so kali is the filipino art of stick and knife fighting and uh if you have your knife on you that's where Kali's at. It's number one. There is no better martial art on earth if you have your knife. Um, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Um, so an idiot with a knife, someone who knows nothing about knife fighting, is um, very, very, very difficult to beat in a fight. Um, if the person is trained with a knife, there is probably nothing you can do to stop them. <laughs> just short of running, which once again, we're basing this off the idea that running's not an option. Maybe running should be put here so I can put it up in, in the uh, game plan. But um, the problem with Kali is the same problem we have with guns in that uh, you don't always have your gu your knife on you. Okay? Um, you don't. Your knife is, um, uh, once again, I can probably say, whoever's watching this video, you probably don't have a knife on you right now. Um it is more likely that you have your knife on you than you have your gun on you because knives are accepted in more areas and knives are also around. And a knife is also a really potent tool. Uh, Kali is also a really potent martial art because it does, in fact, um, utilize sticks as well, which translate into improvised weapons. If you study all of Kali, you learn how to use rope as a weapon. You learn how to use sarongs as a weapon. Um, and there is actually a little bit of firearm usage in Kali as well, which actually kind of moves it up here now that I think about it. Um, Kali practitioners talk extensively about situational awareness. Um, not so much about conflict de-escalation, but they definitely talk a lot about situational awareness, which actually might move it up here a smidgen as well, maybe a little bit above boxing. Um, and the other area where Kali does well is that it is a somewhat well-rounded art. So probably about 80% of the time you study Kali, you're going to be learning how to use a stick or a knife in a fight. However, Kali does have empty-handed attacks. It does. It has a Panatukan, Panajakman. It has punches, kicks, knees, elbows. It also has takedowns. Um, it also has ground fighting. So Kali does have the full spectrum of, of everything. The problem with Kali... Um, is that it's very difficult to pressure test Kali at a high level because who the hell is going to let someone hit them with a stick as hard as they possibly can. Um, but I do think it is a more well-rounded art than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and it's definitely a more well-rounded art than boxing. Um, but because it lacks the pressure testing of these um, kind of top-tier arts up here, I'm going to put it down here. Uh, like I said, if you have your knife on you, Kali's number one. There's nothing better 
uh, than defend than Kali with a knife. But um, but ultimately, you don't always have your knife on you, so I'm not going to view that as like <laughs> the sole like reason why it's good. So it would be up here if it wasn't for the fact that it relies very very heavily on a, having a weapon. Ooh, next up is karate. So karate is a very broad term. I'm going to put it here kind of instinctually. Uh, karate is a really broad term. Um, karate is a term for a lot of martial arts, most of which stem from Okinawa. Karate will focus primarily on punching, kicking, knees, and elbows. Most karate schools have next to no actual grappling skills whatsoever. If they have throws, they're really basic throws, um, and usually they don't have really any ground fighting at all. There is a lot of different styles of karate, so I'm talking about karate as a broad term and not as a focused term like goju-ru or wado-ru or something very specific. So when I look at karate, um, where karate does really well is the fact that much like Hapkido, um, karate does have a... a a really good um, sense of, like, I guess, morality towards its martial art. That it teaches people that not all self-defense situations require lethal force. I'm looking at you, Kempo. We're going to talk. Um, <laughs> not all self-defense situations require lethal force. Um, so karate does focus on using techniques that are lethal, but also techniques that are not lethal. The problem with karate, um, which is similar to Apkido, is that karate is probably the second biggest uh, McDojo creator in the entire world of McDojos. Um, undeniably, you have a little kid cousin or you know someone who has a cousin who's got a black belt in karate, uh, despite the fact that they're like five years old or something like that. And that's because they're effectively a martial arts themed daycare. So um, you are not very likely to come across a high quality karate school um you're, you're i'm gonna keep it there i really want to move it down to a d plus tier just because of how often i see karate schools that are really really suck at the end of the day i've had too many karate practitioners come into my school and they're like a brown belt or a black belt in karate and my yellow belts can beat them up and that's ridiculous um but where karate what stops karate from being like way down here with aikido um is that they spar a lot um, not necessarily always the best kind of sparring, but they do spar a lot and they teach the morality of self-defense, which is really good. Um, it is a less well-rounded art than Hepkido though. So it's not going to be better than Hepkido, but it's, um, it's up there in like that C tier. Next up is Kenpo, the best martial art in the entire world. It's up here, right? Number one. Um, no, Kenpo is not the best martial art in the world, but it's pretty damn good. Um, Kenpo is an art that is 100% based on self-defense. So unlike um, basically everything under here, in which it's a mixed bag about whether or not it's self-defense, Kenpo literally only does self-defense. That is it. Um, the uh, So therefore, it makes Kenpo a, a really good self-defense art. Despite the fact that uh, Kenpo is oftentimes called Kenpo Karate, it is not actually a style of karate. Um, it's actually, uh, the karate means something different and it's a complete, it's a much longer story that I'm not going to get into, but what Kempo is, it's a Japanese take on Chinese Kung Fu and then taught to the Hawaiians and brought to America. That is what Kempo actually is. So it is a hybrid of a Chinese, Japanese, Hawaiian, and American art, uh, through its history. Like I said, Kempo is a hundred percent focused on self-defense. The Kempo has two huge problems. The first, which is going to put it right above BJJ, um, is that Kempo does not really teach less than lethal solutions. Um, it does because it's punches and kicks and, and it has chokes. Um, but Kempo is very much a kill your opponent kind of martial art. If you study Kempo, the answer to everything is to knee them in the crotch chop them in the throat, double eye gouge. I mean, it is just ferocious. And CDS has that element in it. But CDS also contains like the judo aspect where you're not killing your opponent. Whereas Kempo leaves you with only just the most brutal attacks ever. A Kempo practitioner relishes in the pain of his opponent. Kempo is so much more than just beating your opponent. Kempo is borderline torturing your opponent. And if that's the only skills you have, um, it kind of limits you in what you're able to do self-defense-wise. Because once again, um, 
if your wife gets really, really drunk and starts to attack you, are you going to do Kenpo moves to her? No, you're going to do Judo to her. You're going to pin her down and tell her to calm down. You're not going to rake out her eyes and smash her head into the con- into the floor, which Kenpo would uh, love to do. Um, the other area where Kenpo kind of falters um, is the fact that uh, Kenpo is not very well-rounded. Um, BJJ isn't either. Um, but I consider it more of a detriment not to know ground fighting than it is a detriment not to know stand fighting. Yes, 100% of martial art uh, fights start standing up, but a vast majority of them go to the ground. Um, and the way I always think about it is I don't care how good of a ground fighter, of a stand fighter you are. I don't care how good you are at punches and kicks. If you just kind of run the numbers in your head, most high schools have a wrestling team and most cities have several high schools. So in any given city, you have many, 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 many people who at least understand how to take someone to the ground. So you could be a black belt in Kenpo and then someone puts you on the ground and you become a white belt. And that's a huge problem. Um, so I think Kenpo is pretty damn good. Um, uh, it just, it's, it's kind of narrow sighted in how violent it is. It is like overly aggressive and it doesn't really have a ground game. Um, Ooh, am I going to move Kempo lower? I might move Kempo lower. Um, because the other thing Kempo has is the same thing Hepkido and Karate has, is that there are some Kempo schools that are fucking awesome and will teach you outstanding fighting abilities. When I was uh, studying Kempo, I'm a fourth degree black belt in Kempo, just so you know. So that's why I, I have an opinion about it. Um, when I was studying Kempo, um, we sparred every single night. You always fought. Um, but there's a lot of Mick Dojos in Kempo as well. Um, so I'm going to put Kempo ahead of Catch Wrestling. Um, move it over here like that. There we go. I'm going to put Kempo ahead of Catch Wrestling based off of the fact that um, that it does have a, a more well-rounded curriculum than Catch Wrestling, but it doesn't get up here in this like top, top tier um, just because it does. Ha- there are plenty of Mick Dojos, so you got to be careful about what Kempo school you go to. Next up, we have Kickboxing. So kickboxing is better than boxing, but not as good as BJJ, I would say. Uh, well, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, nope, I'm going to put it here. Firm. Firm kickboxing is there. Kickboxing is punching, kicking, um, usually above the waist. Um, there is some lower level, like low-line kickboxing schools. We're talking specifically about American kickboxing because we look down here, we can see Muay Thai. So we're specifically talking about American kickboxing. Undeniably, it's better for self-defense than boxing. But for all the reasons boxing is here, kickboxing is here as well. Um, you will learn how to fight being a kickboxer, and you'll become really, really good at it. But you will not learn necessarily how to defend yourself. Kickboxing doesn't work against someone with a knife. Kickboxing uh, has a very small chance of success against multiple opponents. So uh, it goes there, and there's no denying that kickboxing will not teach you uh, situational awareness, conflict de-escalation. It's not going to teach you any of that. So we put it there. Next is Krav Maga, the greatest self-defense art in the world. Um, Krav Maga is a martial art that should be really fucking good. Um, it is currently one of the most popular martial arts for self-defense, that when people are looking to study self-defense, Krav Maga like comes into their mind. However, the issue with Krav Maga is their narrow-minded and very shallow curriculum. To be honest, Krav Maga doesn't pressure te- test correctly. They do things that they call stress drills, um, and stress drills, um, they honestly don't prepare you for self-defense nearly as much as just straight-up sparring does. Um, st- the problem with stress drills uh, is their whole goal is to induce a bunch of stress and then see if you can like keep fighting through the stress, and that makes you, I call that big dick martial arts, it makes you feel like a big man. Uh, but the truth is that the real goal shouldn't be to fight through stress. It should actually be more like what they do in U.S. Basics, where uh, the goal is to stay calm under pressure, so you actually don't experience stress at all. Um, it's also a fairly narrow-minded curriculum that a black belt in Krav Maga um, has the striking knowledge and ground fighting knowledge of like a blue belt in almost any other martial art. Um, honestly, Krav Maga is an incredibly shallow martial art with a very narrow-minded focus. It also focus, focuses far too much on like the the concept that you're just going to hit the right point and the person is going to like fall over. That you'll see almost every Krav Maga technique involves hit him in the groin and then punch, 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 punch. Well, that method doesn't work for a 120-pound woman versus a 200-pound man. It doesn't. Um, 
He's not going to collapse. She could punch him until she's blue in the face. Uh, he's going to grab her and he's going to do with her what 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 he wants. She needs to learn how to become a real fighter. And that's kind of the problem with Krav Maga is that uh, Krav Maga does not make you into a real fighter. Um, karate does, Hapkido does, all of these turn you into a real fighter. Um, I, Krav Maga does not make you into a real fighter. Krav Maga teaches you what you would need to know to defend yourself, but it doesn't properly prepare you for that self-defense situation. I would damn near put Krav Maga all the way down here with firearms if it wasn't for the fact that, um, Krav Maga does, at least a good Krav Maga school, does teach situa situational awareness and conflict de-escalation. It also has a more realistic view on self-defense than Hepkido. Um, I don't think it's as good as Kenpo or Catch Wrestling because it doesn't pressure test correctly. So I'm going to put it down here in the C tier. That's where Krav Maga goes. I'm sure I just pissed off a lot of people. At me, bro. Let's move on to Kuksulwan. Okay, so Kuksulwan is a Korean mixed martial art. It's very similar to Hepkido. Um, the idea behind Kuk Sawan is that um, at some point, South Korea had become very westernized. And Kuk Sawan was developed as an attempt to uh, preserve the like history of Korean martial arts. And so you have village arts, you have military arts, and you have royal arts all in this one martial art. Kuk Sawan covers stand, it covers clinch, it covers ground. Um, it could be an extremely effective martial art. The problem with Kuk Sawan is that Kuk Sawan is far more concerned with tradition than it is with effectiveness. And so there is a big focus on running forms. There's a big focus on preserving Korean history. Um, can you become a badass fighter with Kuk Sawan? Absolutely. Will you become a badass fighter with Kuk Sawan? Good chance you won't because the focus isn't going to be as much on making you a good fighter. I remember when I studied Kuk Sawan, they sparred like once a month. Um, and that's really not enough. At my school, for example, we spar literally every night. So we have three open mats a week. Um, but every single night, we every single time we uh, meet up, we spar. So um, six out of seven weeks because we only take one day off. Kuk Sawan's pretty good, but um, because it is so focused on tradition, it will neglect a lot of the things you need for self-defense. Kuk Sawan does teach the morality of self-defense, and that's really good, but you aren't going to learn situational awareness or conflict de-escalation. They do have some weapons, though. Hepkido does, too. I'm going to put Hepkido above Kuk Sawan. We're going to keep it there. All right, mixed martial arts. Now, you could easily put this up here if you just take the literal term mixed martial arts. You just say like, oh, yeah, you should put all these together and then you got mixed martial arts. Um, but we're specifically talking about mixed, mar mixed martial art, the sport. OK, um, mixed martial arts, the sport is going to have effectively everything that CDS has, except for it's not going to have the cheat codes. So when we look at combative defense system, what combative defense system is, it's mixed martial arts and then you cheat. So. Everything that CDS has, mixed martial arts has, um, except for the fact that MMA is a sport. And because it is a sport, there's certain limitations to what they can do. So you're not going to see eye gouges. You're not going to see, um, I mean, they're, not, they're not even allowed to do a 12 to 6 elbow, which isn't even like that devastating of a shot, but they are limited in the tools that they're allowed to use. I undeniably think that mixed martial arts is a superior form of self-defense to Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, just based off of the fact that um, it's more well-rounded. So Gracie Jiu-Jitsu handles more of the self-defense aspects, but MMA is so is inherently so well-rounded. The only thing it's missing is weapons. Um, unlike a Grace, unlike a Gracie Jiu-Jitsu or Judo, an MMA fighter knows how to hit correctly, and they know how to take a hit correctly. They know stand, they know clinch, they know ground. The only thing MMA is missing for self-defense is that it doesn't uh, acknowledge. So there, there's there's weight classes in MMA. So what you're learning is specifically for fighting someone your size. There's obviously no weapons, so you don't learn how to use or defend against a weapon. And then, of course, because it is a sport, you don't learn situational awareness or conflict de-escalation um, from MMA. But MMA is pretty freaking good. If you don't have access to these two, MMA is probably the next best thing. Next up is Muay Thai. Um, you know, Muay Thai, where did we put kickboxing? Yeah, Muay Thai is exactly like kickboxing, but better. Um, kickboxing is really, really good. Um, 
kickboxing could be more versatile if you use it correctly. Um, but what I really love about Muay Thai is the fact that uh, they just hit so fucking hard. So everything I said about kickboxing applies to Muay Thai, except for Muay Thai hits harder. So that that's that's it. So it has all the same weaknesses and strengths. Let's move on to tactical police, police tactics. Okay, so everybody who studied self-defense has come across somebody who, like, either was a cop or um, is a cop or knows someone who's a cop and teaches self-defense based off of what the police are taught. One thing to understand is that a lot of police officers don't get excellent hand-to-hand -hand combat training. If you think about what a police officer is, they're a person with a with generally some kind of armor on, they have a gun, a taser, pepper spray, and handcuffs on them. They have a radio to call backup, um, and they are also always generally starting off in a position of authority, whereas in a self-defense situation, you, bear, you normally are not in a position of authority. Um, because police tactics rely on all of that, that's what would prevent it from being up here, up here, is that uh, police tactics is for a very specific situation. I think it is a really, really um, uh, kind of like false logic to say that if it works for a police officer, it will work for me because a police officer is in a very different situation than you are. They have weapons. They start from a position of power and control. Um, they have backup. There's a lot of things in their advantage. If you think about the the goal of a police officer, generally speaking, in a fight, is to take the person down to the ground and like cuff them. Whereas your goal in a self defense situation is to get that person to a point where you can run away. You don't have handcuffs on you. Um, because of that, I would actually put it above Krav Maga but below catch wrestling and Kempo. The area where it moves right back up is going to be boy oh boy everything I've been bitching about. Situational awareness, conflict de-escalation, um, understanding the psychology of an attacker. All of that is going to take uh, police tactics. I'm, I'm, Nick, I, I don't want to put it up here, and I'll tell you why I don't want to put it up here. And the reason why I don't want to put police tactics up here is because you don't ever actually become a good fighter from police tactics. Um, that you kind of learn to be survivable and then rely on your tools. Um, there is no... Uh, if you go to like a... A, a police versus um, if you go to like a police versus firemen like boxing match you can see most police officers don't know jack shit about fighting they are not good fighters what they are good at um, is using their tools appropriately so I'm going to put it down here um, I think catch will make you a better fighter Kempo will make you a better fighter um, police tactics would be way down here in the D except for how good it is at teaching situational awareness and conflict de-escalation um, and understanding, obviously understanding of your local law. So I say police tactics would be right there. That makes sense to me. So not, not quite as good as catch or Kenpo, um, but probably better than Krav Maga or Hepkido. Um, just because Krav Maga may teach the situational awareness, but these guys have real world, ex, uh, real, real world experience in doing so. Shaolin Kung Fu. It's not self-defense. Um, boy, I could put it on either side of this. I'll put it here just because it's a little cooler, I guess. So Shaolin Kung Fu. A lot of people think that the Shaolin are like supremely good fighters, and that is not true. Most Shaolin fighting monks, quote unquote, literally have never sparred. Um, they study weapons, they study punches, they study kicks, they learn how to do, uh, show tricks, you know, like breaking bricks and breaking boards and like bending spears to their neck. Um, Shaolin Kung Fu is the origin of Asian martial arts, but at the end of the day, Shaolin Kung Fu is much more of a system of acrobatics with a martial arts twist than it is a self-defense. It's not going to teach you anything you need for self-defense, um, and most Shaolin martial arts uh literally never spar honest to goodness shaolin monks very rarely spar so that's where we'll put it there so it's a little better than aikido um but it's it's like it's like better than aikido just because like it's cooler but neither of them are actual like self-defense arts you will not become a good fighter from either of those arts what else do we got here salat okay so salat should be good right so salat's like like way up here Okay, Salat has punches, kicks, knees, elbows. It has takedowns. It has joint locks. Unfortunately, Salat very rarely pressure tests anything. Um, I have uh, been studying Salat for 
five or six years now, and we've literally never done any pressure testing with Salat. That whenever I go to a Salat class, we learn to, it's almost like Aikido, to be honest. We kind of, we, we learn these, like, how to, like, manipulate people's bodies and what have you, but there's never a point in which we're just, like, straight up fighting. Now, there are some Salat schools that do fight, um, which prevents it from being down here, but the vast majority of Salat, um, boy, probably around here, I'd say, uh, the vast majority of Salat techniques um, are going to, um, boy, yeah. I don't know. I got to be real about Salat. <laughs> Salat's not really not that great, I guess. Um, it's down here. For sure, it's down here. Um, so Salat conceptually should be a really, really good martial art. Okay? So it should be very, very good. Um, the problem is a lot of the Salat techniques rely on your opponent or your partner like kind of standing still while you do stuff to them. And fights are a lot more dynamic than that. Um, I could easily make an argument that it is every bit as... Uh, it lacks the realism that Aikido lacks. Um, but I will say that I have actually used Salat, uh, in sparring. I have not used it in like a challenge match or anything, but I've definitely used aspects of Salat in sparring. So it's not complete garbage, but I would say that you probably are, are much better off studying one of these martial arts. Next up is Taekwondo. Okay. So a lot of people study karate and Taekwondo. They'll learn them both. Um, Karate and Taekwondo both suffer from the same problem in the fact that they, uh, in the fact that they have a glut of Mick Dojos. It is incredible. Uh, but Taekwondo definitely has more Mick Dojos. Uh, I have, okay, I'm, I want to make this clear. I'm sure someone out there studies a hell of a good Taekwondo school. In my area, I've lived in three states. I've lived in Missouri, Mississippi, and Indiana. In all three states, Every Taekwondo school was a McDojo. There wasn't a single Taekwondo school in any of those three states that I came across. Keep that in mind. It's just my experience. That wasn't a martial arts themed daycare. These are money making machines. A lot of people will get their black belts in like two to three years, which is absolutely ridiculous because they aren't teaching you jack shit. And even the Taekwondo schools that um, are good, they're probably focused more on the sport of Taekwondo than actual self-defense. Um, the Olympic sport of Taekwondo is a really cool sport, but it's not going to make you a good fighter. I think you could take some of the best Taekwondo people and put them against like halfway decent BJJ guys or Kemp or uh, catch wrestler guys, and I think, I think they'd get smoked. Um, Taekwondo, uh, you could become a good fighter learning Taekwondo, but at the end of the day, um, it's down here for all the previously stated reasons. Also, Taekwondo people are really bad about protecting their head. Um, every Taekwondo person I've ever sparred with or fought with, I was able to punch them in their head literally whenever I wanted. So, yeah, so it's down there in D. It's still technically fighting. Um, it's not like a fake martial art, but you know what? It's uh, really not that great. Tai Chi! Tai Chi is worse than Aikido for self-defense. There is something worse than Aikido for self-defense. Um, there is a weird group of people out there who are convinced Tai Chi works for self-defense. And that is just not true, period. End of story. Um, tai Chi has like a legendary root of starting as a self-defense art, but um, or as a martial art. But I will tell you, Tai Chi at this point is... A way to keep the blood flowing. It's a form of meditation. That's all it is. If you are training under a Tai Chi teacher and he's claiming that you're learning how to protect yourself, you need to leave because he's fucking delusional. I guarantee you, I promise you that he's never been in a real fight and used Tai Chi. If he was in a fight and he won, it was because uh, the fight went his way, just like a street fight goes their way for anyone who doesn't know how to fight. When two people who know nothing fights, someone still wins, okay? Um, don't assume that, but to be honest, I doubt that they've even fought. Tai Chi practitioners who believe it works for, for fighting are, they're delusional. It doesn't work. Next up, we're going to have Wing Chun Kung Fu, the worst martial art on earth. Um, Wing Chun gets a lot of flack in the world of martial arts. Uh, because if you just type in Wing Chun versus, you're going to find really quickly um, a million videos of Wing Chun practitioners getting their ass kicked. And that's because Wing Chun uh, suffers from a lot of the same issues that Salat suffers from in the fact that like Wing Chun has a lot of good techniques, 
but a lot, most Wing Chun practitioners don't spar. If I were to go by Wing, if I said Wing Chun as an art by itself, I would say it's a little bit more effective than boxing. That if we if we were to train Wing Chun exactly like we trained kickboxing or boxing, I would say Wing Chun was actually a bit more effective than boxing, just on like a technique for technique basis. But the problem is Wing Chun t practitioners very rarely pressure test their art. This is an art that I teach, and when I teach it, I teach it just like boxing. So this is where it would be in my school. So if I taught you Wing Chun, I'm a Wing Chun instructor. If I taught you Wing Chun, this is how I would teach it to you because I would take my I take my background and so I. I studied boxing and kickboxing, and I train Wing Chun in, the, in that same way. I, t I train it like this. Um, but most Wing Chun schools are far more focused on forms. They're far more focused on Chi Sao. Um, there's plenty of Wing Chun schools that never, ever spar. Um, I think it's good to be here because I think it has very effective techniques, um, but it just needs to be trained better. So um, I think it's a little bit better than Krav Maga. Maybe, yeah, it's, it's a little bit better than Krav Maga because um, I'll tell you why it's better than Krav Maga. I think Wing Chun and Krav Maga are probably equally effective, but like Wing Chun people know the weaknesses of their art, whereas Krav Maga people are convinced that their art's infallible. And so they're going to be a lot more delusional and a lot more liable to make mistakes, whereas a Wing Chun person will know when their shit's not going to work because they have a much more realistic view on their art. At least most of them do. Probably just piss off more Krav Maga people, but deal with it. You guys don't have the best martial art in the world. It's actually not that great. Um, <laughs> next up is Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Um, you know, Japanese Jiu Jitsu is a really broad term. Uh, it's almost like saying dance. It's such a broad term. Technically, CDS, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Judo, BJJ um, are all forms of uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, that they all trace their roots back to Japanese Jiu Jitsu. I mean, even there's elements of, of uh, Jiu Jitsu in uh, Kenpo. The problem with Japanese Jiu Jitsu is that it is solely a self defense art, it is solely designed um, to preserve tradition. Um, most Japanese jiu-jitsu schools will never spar. Um, and because they're not sparring, they're never pressure testing because they are traditional arts. They are almost never going to, um, they're never going to, uh, like focus on modern problems, right? So you're not going to study Japanese jiu-jitsu and, you know, learn how to defend yourself against a rapist. Uh, because that wasn't a concern of a samurai. Because <laughs> and this and this is kind of the truth about all of these that a lot of these arts weren't designed for self defense. And so when they're being taught for self defense, they're kind of being shoehorned into a very specific like, I guess, area if that makes sense. Um, okay, so last is wrestling. So we have catch wrestling up here, and that's wrestling with submissions. Uh, this is just standard wrestling. Um, and I think I think a wrestler would beat a Krav Maga person in a fight. Um, at, so we saw with Mark Coleman when he first came to the UFC that he didn't understand like mixed martial arts at all. But with just wrestling, he was able to put people on the ground and just like smash their face in. So catch wrestling is a superior art for self-defense because it's a lot more well-rounded because it has like chokes and joint locks and wrist locks and what have you. It They have all the same weaknesses. Um, but because wrestlers practice at full force, they are going to be a superior... Man, wrestling's better than Wing Chun. It really is. Um, because they practice at full force, um, they are going to... Uh, they're going to have a much better chance of understanding kind of the energy of a fight and um, being dealing with just that chaotic, like power of a fight if that, if that makes sense they obviously don't get put in the top tier because they don't really have any self-defense it is a sport but i would say a wrestler with a heavy hand could win uh, quite a lot of self-defense situations but they are lacking in some other areas so that's not every martial art in the world but that was a long ass video um so as we can see here um so our top tiers um do i want to move anybody does anyone need to be moved up um See, these are the only two that really deal with both the fighting and the, um, like, psychological aspect. There are plenty of these, like, police tactics and army and guns that deal with, like, law and psychology, but they don't deal with the fighting nearly as well. And then there's plenty of arts like mixed martial arts and judo and 
kickboxing that will make you a really fucking good fighter, but won't teach you about the psychology of a fight. So, um, or like self-defense philosophy, I guess. So I think this is exactly where it should be. Now, obviously this is my own list. Um, tell me where you would organize things. I'm sure, um, a lot of you guys would move things around, but this is how I look at the world of martial arts. This is generally how I feel about it. I know this is a really long video and I'm going to tell you something. If you've made it this far in the video, if you're still watching this video, you like my content. So if you haven't subscribed what are you doing? Click that subscribe button, um, hit the bell button, like and share this with your friends. Um, and I'd also just love to hear everyone else's opinions. I can't stress enough that this this is very much my opinion. This is my take on it um, from my expertise of my 25 years of self-defense training. This is kind of how what I've encountered in the world of martial arts. Um, I'm not necessarily, and I can't stress enough because I know some of you guys are going to say like a BJJ guy would beat the shit out of a judo guy or a Muay Thai guy would beat the shit out of a Jeet Kune Do guy. I'm not talking about pure just fighting. I'm also talking about um, self-defense. I'm talking about fighting plus understanding situational awareness, conflict de-escalation, the psychology of attacker, how to identify an abusive partner. I'm talking about all of that. And that's the reason why like, I firmly believe that um, somebody who studies Krav Maga could beat up a, uh, let's see, let's talk about um, Krav Maga is a bad example. Um, I, here we go. I firmly believe that a, that a uh, karate expert could beat up somebody who studied police tactics, but a police tactics person will understand self-defense better than a karate person. That's what we're saying. We're talking about specifically self-defense, not just who's the better fighter. So that's my list. Um, if I can, I'll put a, uh, I'll put a link to this in the description so that you can play around with it and make your own list. Um, if you are in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to train with me of these arts, we teach CDS, we teach, uh, JKD. We do private lessons in judo. We have Kali classes. We have kickboxing classes. Uh, we teach private lessons in Kenpo. We have Wing Chun group classes. Anything else here? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what we got. Um, so, so if you're interested in studying any of those arts with us in Indianapolis, all the information will also be in the description box down below, as well as on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. I'm really happy that you took the time to watch this whole video. Please be sure to share this with people and subscribe. Until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.